Stratford and Avon Canal starts in the outskirts of Birmingham, the black water and green corridor surrounded by housing and industry. Oh, and of course, the occasional lazy dumping of rubbish. To be fair, I find this more offensive than graffiti. Note the shuttered windows on the boats to stop the local yobs lobbing bricks through them. past Shirley and things begin to look a bit more rural as we enter the modern and affluent suburb of Dickens Heath. Water cascading down steps, footballers homes perhaps. A moored near Earlswood, glad to be out of the urban landscape. Built up areas really aren't for me, I'm afraid. This section of the canal between Kings Norton and Kingswood Junction was built to a more conventional canal standard than the southern section was. In fact, the whole budget for the canal was used constructing the first 10 miles of the navigation, which didn't have any locks in it. More money was then raised and a further 3 miles and 19 locks were built to join the Grand Union at Kingswood. Nine years later, and enough money had been found to continue the project to take the canal a further 13 miles and 35 locks to the River Avon in Stratford. And this southern section is where the canal begins to get rather quirky. And I wonder if this was because they were trying to save money. The very narrow split bridges, and the locks with single bottom gates, the barrel roofed lock keepers cottages, but more of that in the next episode. I've seen you Mr Lanky Heron watching over the Christmas tree plantation. Approaching the M42 motorway, a reminder that the city is still not that far behind us.
I stopped temporarily at Hockley Heath to get some food. Now, this is the third time I've had trouble getting the boat close to the edge on this canal. It seems quite shallow on the northern section. The arm on the left was once a coal wharf. Hockley Heath is definitely a footballer's village. The first thing you see is a car showroom selling rollers and McLarens. And it also had the poshest co-op I've ever been in. So we come to the second of the three drawbridges. Now I don't know why they're called drawbridges on this canal and not lift bridges. Being so low, I have to moor on the offside and run through the boat to tie the bow line to a bollard, if there is one. Oh yes, there it is. Reverie continued to drift forward, but I got there just in time to stop my camera getting mashed. Ominous clouds, a portent for yet more rain. This collie doesn't seem to mind though. And the last drawbridge. I have to say, I was none too happy that an almost derelict yoghurt pot had been moored so close on the permanent moorings. So close to where any solo boater will have to tie up to. If Reverie had managed to nudge it, it probably would have sunk. I know I can be cynical, but I did wonder if that was the intention, so that a claim could be made against my insurance. Fortunately for me, there was a friendly crew on board the holiday boat that was following closely behind, and they opened the bridge for me. You too. Enjoy the locks. <laughs> the Lapworth flight starts around the corner, and that'll be something to tackle tomorrow. I've started my descent from the Birmingham Plateau, uh, and I'm at Lapworth Locks. Um, it's quite a large lock flight, um, but it's actually uh, split into a series. So, so there's a series of four, then a series of nine, and then another series of nine. Uh, followed by another 31 locks down into Stratford upon Avon. Uh, so I just, I've already done the first four this morning, so I just thought I'd moor up, have a cup of tea, have some breakfast, and um, actually wait for some boats to go that way. And there's one coming now, which is excellent because uh, that means all, well, that means at least some of the locks should be set in my favour. So uh, I'll finish my cup of tea and crack on, I think. Now there's not many of these left on the network. This is only the second one I've seen. It's a roller. The towing rope was fed around it to help the horses pull boats out of locks or around tight bends.
I've got to say that much of the lock gear on the northern section of the Lapworth lock flight is the most tight and heavy I have used anywhere on the network. Now of course this may be because Covid prevented work on the locks during the winter, but chatting to a lockie on the Wilmcote flight later in the journey, he told me he didn't really like working up at Lapworth because of the heavy locks. There is often something quite special about canal junctions, and Kingswood Junction is no exception. They often have really lovely buildings, uh, old wharf buildings, cottages, stabling blocks and that kind of thing. Uh, some of them have lovely pubs on them too. And Kingswood is blessed with a couple of basins, early 19th century buildings, a peculiar Y-shaped arm which joins the Grand Union Canal. We should have been able to film going through Kingswood, but it was raining so much yesterday that it just wasn't possible. This place is for sale if you've got a spare 400 grand going for a two bedroom property, but it is quite charming, located on its own little island. I'm beginning to sound like an estate agent. And the barrel roofed lock keeper's cottage. All the lockies cottages are built to a uniform style on this canal, which is actually quite unusual. Well, certainly I've never come across it before. The first glimpse of the Grand Union, or the Warwick and Birmingham as it was known back in the day. Crabby Junction has always been my favourite junction that I've visited so far on the network, but actually Kingswood really takes the biscuit. What's your favourite junction? Let me know in the comments.